welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of January 2nd, uh, 2018. This is the inaugural meeting of our next term, the 2018-2019 meeting. This is the uh, organizational committee meeting that where we basically, we have no other agenda items other than to become counselors and also become educated as counselors or re-educated as it were. Um, so uh, there are a number of items on the agenda, but the process here is there's gonna be an election of officers, at which point uh, one of the, when we elect the council president, then the council president will assume this position and uh, manage the rest of the meeting. But to start with, we're going to have a uh, swearing in of the administrative assistant, Laura Kretzler, who is been serving ably and now she gets to become more official and then also Councilor Lisa Klein whose card didn't quite step up to the task to allow her to be present at our very august and formal ceremony which featured uh, parades, bands, lots of food and a banquet it was amazing. It's an open bar. But, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, Pam, would you do the honors, please? <laughs> right here. I actually, my phone's dead. I don't have a camera. Is it, can anyone chronicle this, document this for Laura's swearing in? Does anyone have a camera? Bowl? I could appreciate the irony of asking for a camera. Here, you don't have your phone? No, my phone's dead. My phone is Laura's phone. Laura can her phone. Elisa's got a better angle. All right, there we go. Oh! <laughs> is that fish lunch? Oh, Do you have anything else for the fish? Get out of here quick. Me too. Get run over. Okay, I'm Elisa right hand. I'm going to be after me, please. I am Laura Kressler. I am Laura Kressler. Solemnly swear and affirm. Solemnly swear and affirm. To faithfully and impartially, to faithfully and impartially, discharge and perform, discharge and perform, the duties of the office, the duties of the office, in accordance with the Constitution of this Commonwealth, in accordance with the Constitution of this Commonwealth, the Charter, the Charter, ordinances, ordinances, and the rules of the City of Northampton, and the rules of the City of Northampton, to the best of my knowledge and ability, to the best of my knowledge and ability. Congratulations. You gotta get a good camera angle. Right? On the board it says the evil sign on the right above you. But I'm the photographer. I guess it's a shame we're going on. Okay, I need you to repeat after me. Okay. I, Elisa Klein. I, Elisa Klein. Soundly swear and affirm. Solemnly swear and affirm. To faithfully and impartially. To faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. To which I have been elected. To which I've been elected. In accordance with. In accordance with. The Constitution of this Commonwealth. The Constitution of this Commonwealth. The Charter. The Charter. Ordinances. Ordinances. And the rules of the city of Northampton, and the rules of the city of Northampton, to the best of my knowledge and ability, to the best of my knowledge and ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Now everyone's all sworn in, actually, all the way up and down the city, so we're all we're official. So your first official duty is to call the Council here. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Donald. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor McDonald. Here. Councilor Sharon. Here. All right. We've got everybody. We have a quorum, so we are convened. Uh, first up, the first item is election of the City Council President. Uh, this is for the term 2018 to 2019, and the floor is open for nominations. So I'll accept. Councilor LaBarge. Yes, um, I'd like to bring on the floor for a nomination, um, Ryan O'Donnell. Second. 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 Are there any other nominations? Members, should we need to open nominations first? Or right, I just went officiously went and opened the nominations, but uh, actually, I'm sorry. Before we'll we open, open nominations, nominations, 
Is there a second, second. second. nominations? Yes. Yeah, okay. All those in favor of opening the floor to nominations, please say aye. 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 Now let's go back in time and remember that Council of the Barge has nominated Council O'Donnell and was seconded by Council Murphy. Is <laughs> there are there any other nominations? Council Murphy. I would move nominations be closed. Is there a second? Second. Okay. You have Council of the Barge on that. All right. All those in favor of closing nominations, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So, now it comes to a vote. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for you to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> She's okay. catching up. Do we have discussion? Yeah, there should be a discussion. Or a speech. He should, oh. he should be speech. You, you want a discussion? You want to make your case? I'm happy to, sure. Um, thank you very much for, for the nomination. Um, the beginning of my speech is part of me um, has a hard time picturing any other council president but Councilor Dwight. Um, You'll get not, used to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just would, would really like to, to note that, that um, Council Dwight has led the council for the last six years, um, not just capably, but with um, a strong, um, strong sense of moral courage. I feel that even at our times when we disagree with each other the most, I feel that he's brought in his, in his way a sense of, of unity to the council and kind of shows that this disagreement that we've had um, or agreement this has all been good and he's made this a really deliberative effective body and I'd like to note that and express um, my appreciation. Um, I don't think I can approximate that. I can try. But as far as the work of the job of, of council president goes, I'll just briefly say what, what I think it entails. I think it has to do with work before council meetings, work during council meetings, and work in between them. And before the council meeting, you need the council president to work with our administrative assistant and the mayor and the solicitor and city departments and councilors to assemble an agenda. I think during the meetings, you want the council president to do what Council Dwight did, which is facilitate uh, debate and make sure all councils are heard and heard fairly. And then I think in between council meetings, you want the council president to be involved in the community and in all seven wards and be willing to work with members of the city council, whether it's Florence, uh, Northampton, or Leeds, on the issues that affect their constituents. Um, so that is how I view the job. I would do my best to, to live up to that um, challenge, and I'm very appreciative of, of the chance to do that. So thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to the nomination? Councilor um, I'd like to express my appreciation for Councilor McDonald's willingness to step into a role. Uh, it's clearly a demanding and time consuming role. And uh, I'm very delighted that you're willing to assume the vote goes the way I have a feeling it will, except the, this, this, this post. And uh, I'm sure you'll do a great job. I look forward to, to working with you. And if this is the time also to send kudos in the, in the way of our outgoing council president. Um, I would just say that as this last term was with my maiden voyage, the rest of you would accept the council manager veterans of this visit. And, and Councilor Dwight was um, unfailingly helpful to me in, in, uh, in my uh, initial uh, stint on the council, something I appreciated very much. So long as eggs and jakes were involved, he provide all the advice you'd ever want. I'll put me food on there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I very much, very much appreciate your 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 your, your help. And with regard to um, the running of meetings, which is only one part of a big job, I must say I admire both your uh, mastery of of procedure and protocol, as well as the the lightness of touch that you uh, brought to the the serious job. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Um, Councilor Dwight, I want to thank you again and again for your service as council president. And I, as a city councilor, working with you right from the beginning. Um, I will miss you. I think you've done an excellent job as council president. And when you say, oh, I need to sit back, let somebody else take it, but you should say, I'll be back. And I know you, you'll be back. But anyways, I had a lovely talk with 
Councilor at Large, Ryan O'Donnell, of what his expectations were as being, if elected, as council president. And I wanted to hear exactly what he was going to be all about. And I have to say, I was very pleased to hear him say, which means a lot to me, because of all my residents in the city and in Ward 6, of being a council president and also working with the councilors on every ward throughout the city. And he has been excellent as a counselor at large of helping my residents and I with some big concerns that are going on in that ward. And I think it's very difficult when you're counselors at large, there's only two of them. I think there should be three of them like some of the other city has because the responsibility as council president, it's really a heavy, heavy plight. So that was my reasons why that I nominated Ryan O'Donnell. But thank you for all your service. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Nash and Councilor Murphy. <coughs> so I would like to um, uh, echo uh, what Councilor O'Donnell shared about uh, Councilor Dwight and his leadership. Um, you've managed to um, uh, run council in a kind of folksy and fun, and yet we've got a lot of work done and we've dealt with some very serious things. Mm -hmm. And um, that I, I love the way you've engaged the public. There's never been a question of whether, you know, that, that people stand at that podium, but they feel that they're brought into this group here. And um, that's, a, that's a difficult thing to do. Um, so thank you for your work. Um, uh, Councilor O'Donnell, I, you know, it, just prior while we're, you know, figuring out, you know, where we were on the agenda, uh, Councilor O'Donnell was a uh, point of order, we need to, you know, open nominations first. That, um, uh, that uh, Ryan is a stickler for, you know, how procedure and how meetings are run. And I think that's a really important quality to have um, in, in this role of the president. Um, also, um, you know, I, I've known, uh, Councillor O'Donnell, uh, I think five or six years now through different uh, uh, relationships uh, over in Ward 3. And that, um, and, and the thing that's always impressed me about Ryan is his, um, he, he really believes in public process. And I feel like he's, he's always in search of the perfect public meeting. And it's not, it's, and the perfect public meeting for Ryan is not one where everybody leaves all friendly it's one where everybody leaves feeling that they've done their duty and that, uh, that the city is better. Um, and that his commitment to that process um, is, is, is always apparent. Um, uh, that was my closing line. But the other thing I wanted to add is that, you know, sitting from this vantage, that, you know, that I get to, Ryan lights up. You know, that we're, we're flipping through stuff, but, you know, just, you can just see the light bulb go on, excuse me, you know, his finger goes up, and um, that he's, he's always attentive to everything that we're tending to, and, um, and he really enjoys the, 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 the deliberation that we do. So I, I think he's a fine choice for um, the next council president. Council Murphy. Well, I, I first wanted to recognize Council Bars because she's the only one who remains here that knows both of your incarnations as a counselor, correct? That's true. You served That's with true. her back in the 90s, yep. and then yep. in your resurrection, you served with her? When I had a ponytail, and now. So, first of all, I wanted to thank you for your guidance over the last several years. Mm -hmm. And I'm also very pleased to have seconded your nomination. I think through your hard work in the council, you've been very dedicated. You've worked very, very hard. I have all the confidence in the world that that same effort will go into being council president. Uh, remembering, of course, that you have both figuratively large and factually large shoes to fill. Absolutely. From what I can tell from over here. So. Crocs. Uh, <laughs> Crocs. <Size. laughs> I promise never wear Crocs. Well, never, never to wear. Never to wear. <laughs> that alone recommends you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I'm pleased to second your nomination. I'm happy to vote for you and to support you in the next two years as council president. Thank you, council. Anyone else? 
uh, just like to say, um, it has. I was flattered when I was first nominated, surprised when I was elected, and grateful when I got to serve. And it was it actually the all I did was get out of the way of a very mature, reflective, intensive body. That's it. Not a heavy lift. So I appreciate. I appreciate my time doing this. I'm looking forward to joining you among the ranks. And uh, as to Councillor O'Donnell's prospects as a president, I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt. And I think, that, and in fact, actually, I think uh, to Councillor Nash's points, I think we're there's uh, uh, a new vigor that will be demonstrated in the process of your leadership that I'm, I'm actually looking forward to. I think there's, we've now settled into the charter, we've settled into the mayor. Uh, when I first came on, the mayor was just newly elected, the charter was still being discussed, and we, there, uh, it was actually the reason I originally ran, was mm -hmm. to provide what, what understanding of, of the process that I had to help it, to help facilitate that. It is appropriate now. Actually, it's now appropriate because I think we're actually running pretty well, and I think there are there we're still coming up. We're discovering new little uh, flukes in the charter, and we're still probing and examining the uh, separation of powers and what that means, and more importantly, figuring out what it is that the council's authority is, charge is, and our duty is. Um, which Solicitor Seawall will help us with at some level too, I think. But so thank you all. Thank you. And I, I was going to stop you, but then I was going to, because it wasn't speaking to the point, which was the nomination, but I was soaking it up. So thank you. I'm appreciative of your appreciation. Thank you so, much. so with that, Laura. Oh, Councilor O'Donnell. What, what do we do when there's just one name? Do we still say the last name or do we all just? Well, she was going to. What was going to do a roll call just to make roll it, call. and you can say yes. Say, what has say the been one done name. In the past. Mm -hmm. What has been done in the past when there's been um, one name is either the one name is uh, answered after the roll is called, or call. yeah, or you can say yes or no. I think it would cover it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too worried about the prospect of how this shapes out, just for the record. <laughs> but yes, but, but uh, uh, yes, actually, if you would speak uh, with the honorific counselor, uh, and then the name of the candidate of your choice in this case, and I'll give you time to think about who that might be, and then when your name is called, how's that? Sounds like All right. a plan. Sounds like a plan. All right, Laura. Councilor Carney. Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor Dwight. Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor Klein. Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor Labarge. Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor Murphy. Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor Nash. Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor O'Donnell. <laughs> Councillor Shara. Councillor O'Donnell. And Councillor Bidwell. Councillor O'Donnell. There it is by acclamation, the president of the North Hampton City Council. Yeah. Placard, you can take yours. Wow, this is always fun. Yeah, I know. Good luck. Hey, what's awesome. up? Hey. Little <laughs> <laughs> musical chairs. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And at this time, um, I entertain a motion to open nominations for the position of council vice so president. Moved. Second. We gotta wait because Councillor Murphy, I think, went. Oh, oh. oh. Councillor Murphy left. <laughs> <laughs> I see, there's a little bit of the agenda left. Oh, it's it's my first challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have we, we can act on opening nominations yeah. anyway. So. so, all those in favor of opening nominations? Aye. 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 No. So, nominations from the floor now can work. Councillor Klein. I'd like to nominate Councillor Shara. Or Vice President of the Council. Second. Council Sheriff's name is placed in nomination. Are there other nominations from the floor? Council I'd like to move close the nominations. Second. Uh, all those in favor of closing nominations? Aye. 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 Aye.
conversations are closed. Um, so, debate, discussion, Council Sherr, would you like to speak to the question on the nomination? Sure, first I'm going to take my turn, if you don't, now that you're right here. Um, <laughs> Councilor Dwight's leadership was a primary reason, actually, that I ran for council over four years ago. Um, and Northampton could not have asked for a better steward um, to take over the gavel from the mayor uh, in that new era of an entirely separate council. And um, he's brought a uniquely warm and equitable and thoughtful tone of approach to the council presidency while never sacrificing his clear convictions as a counselor, which is not easy. Um, and I, I hope that we can still expect that um, you will provide your excellent analysis where you can take the big picture and then distill it down to the very nut of an issue because it's a remarkable skill and very needed and appreciated. So thank you for, for all of that service. Thank you. Um, and I, I would be honored to be entrusted with uh, the position of council vice president. Um, in addition to presiding over the meetings, if the council president, congratulations, um, uh, is ever unable um, to do so, I would do all I can to encourage a robust and uh, thoughtful deliberative process in the council. Um, I have immense faith and respect for this group. Um, and I think we do our best work when we are engaged with not only the people that we represent, but also the departments and the governmental structure that today we uh, took an oath to also faithfully uphold. So um, I'll do my, my part to help foster constructive conversations with those various viewpoints and, um, and help bring together all of, all of those viewpoints that really make this, this city a pretty special and remarkable place. So thank you for your, your faith. Thank you. Any other discussion or comments? Question to Vice President Council. Yeah, well, this is just like a big love fest, isn't it? It's, uh, the, I'm, I'm actually, I feel so much more secure knowing that the two of you will serve in, in, as officers here because I think the two of you actually have a synergistic combination of, of talents that actually will be Prove the way we conduct policy, and Council Shara functions with a very big heart, and in the, without that, I think we would suffer significantly. I think that, that we would just be turned into uh, really boring meetings ultimately. But not not that not that she's she's evoked a certain passion. She has compassion, which is more important. Um, so. I'm, I, I feel comfortable with the leadership and the backup leadership, as it were, and I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely looking forward to the next two years under, the, under your, both your guidance. Any other comments? I can just say briefly that um, I have served under Councilor Shera as the chair of the Community Resources Committee and um, I've just been really impressed with um, her ability to, first of all, she's extremely thoughtful, very thorough, um, but her ability to really allow all voices to come to the fore and to be expressed. Um, she's very supportive of all of the members of the committee in a way that allows us to, to bring our best selves to the committee. Um, and so it just really convinced me that she would be the person to, as a backup to the president, but um, also to kind of, you know, hold things together in the ways that a vice president does. Um, and as our now president did as the vice president, paying attention all the time to all the details of the charter, I'm sure that you'll, you know, really get up to snuff on that and be ready to step in when needed with all of those things. Those are also very good shoes to go, but. Thank you, Councilor well, Carney. Just my thanks to everybody. Thanks, Councilor Dwight, for uh, your leadership as Council as Council President and um, willingness, Councilor Donald and Shara, to do really a pretty hefty job. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councilor. Is there any other discussion on the question of? Uh, election of the Vice President of the Council. Uh, 
Uh, so if not, could we have a roll call on this as well? And please say the last name of the council you, you are choosing. Right. Councilor Dwight. Councilor Sherra. Councilor Klein. Councilor Sherra. Councilor Labarge. Councilor Sherra. Councilor Murphy. Councilor Sherra. Councilor Nash. Councilor Sherra. Councilor O'Donnell. Councilor Sherra. Councilor Sherra. Councilor Sherra. Councilor Bidwell. Councilor Sherra. Councilor Tony. Councilor Sherra. Congratulations, Councilor Sherra. And condolences to the enrollment committee. <laughs> uh, who must be next appointed. The current enrollment committee is Councilor Klein and Bart. Uh, are you willing to continue in that role? Yes. <laughs> as long as Councillor Nash doesn't get more paper, resentful <laughs> of the fact that he has to sit between us as we pass the papers back and forth. <laughs> 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 no, no, yes, I'm very happy Good. we can take it back. You, you accept the honor, so you uh, appoint, I will appoint uh, Councillor Barge and Councillor uh, Klein to the enrollment committee for this term. Um, thank you very much for doing that. Um, next up is an order to adopt the City Council rules for 2018 and 2019. Uh, is there a motion to approve the order? So moved. Second. Made by Council Dwight, second by Council LaBarge. Is there any discussion on the rules? Council Bidwell. Uh, I would just mention that not for today and not for Thursday, but for probably the meeting of January 18th, Council Shar and I have been working on some slight amendments to the rules that we expect to bring forward uh, at the second meeting in, in January. Great. Just as I had Excellent. Thank you. Um, yeah, Councilor. I, I think to that point that, that um, we've discovered in the course of uh, this year, of, we literally probe, we challenged virtually every rule in the book. At some point, we ran up against something in that uh, I think a, a good discussion about how we can fine tune the rules so that they accommodate these kind of anomalies that keep showing up. And, and the honor rules and also discussion of some charter reform too, so we'll see. Absolutely. Any other comments? I mean, the rules today, it's kind of like installing the operating system on the computer, and then over time we'll have improvements and patches and fixes that we can um, add, uh, because they're all, they're a work in progress, they're a living, a living document. Um, and according to the rules, one vote of the city council was sufficient to adopt them, uh, but six votes will be required. Um, so I'd ask for a roll call, unless there's any other discussion, I don't call for discussion. Um, I would ask for a roll call. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lamarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sherry? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. And Councilor Dwight? Yes. Okay. So the rules are adopted unanimously. Uh, and now we come to uh, a presentation from uh, our city solicitor, Alan Seawall. This is about the open meeting law, the conflict of interest, and public records law. Um, solicitor Seawall, you've given this presentation many times before, so I think I'll turn it over to you to provide an introduction on these topics, then we can open up the questions if there are any. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, may I first say, not as a solicitor, but as a citizen of this but I appreciate what you all do very much. I know how hard the, the job is and how many hours you all put in, and it's, it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with President O'Donnell. Uh, we've worked together quite a bit in the past because, uh, as you all know, Councillor O'Donnell was prolific in the Ordinance Department, and I would really sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I totally appreciate you, you know, coming to me at the beginning of the process as opposed to at the end of the process. Uh, so let me get into just these three topics. Uh, none of you are records. We've got a couple of so sophomores here. We've got no fresh freshmen, fresh women here. So uh, I'm going to be brief. I want to start with the conflict of interest law because if there's any law that can uh, cause pain in your life personally, it's the conflict of interest law. And sometimes the conflict of interest law is sort of like driving a car in one of those uh, video games where like the deers keep popping up all over the place and you're having to navigate these roads um, and uh, they come up at the most unexpected times and places. So let me just say that 
this all starts with you as counselors being what we call municipal employees. A municipal employee is someone who serves the community, it doesn't matter whether they're interim, appointed, elected, paid, unpaid, it doesn't matter. If you have a job to do, you have a charge uh, on behalf of this city, the conflict of interest law is there to make sure that when you act, you only are serving the municipal interest. Any time you feel your private interest creeping into your thought process, it's time to call Seawall, okay? or it's time to call the State Ethics Commission. Because if you're wondering whether you should do it, there's a fair chance you shouldn't. Um, conflict of interest laws apply to your interests, your financial interests, your property interests, but it also applies to the interests of your immediate family, which includes you, your spouse, and and the two of you, your parents, <coughs> children, brothers and sisters. So it's not just you, it's also your spouse's family. So just be uh, sensitive to that. Um, the conflict of interest law, as I said, uh, is intended to prohibit your personal interests or your immediate family members' personal interests from bleeding into your thinking about your municipal uh, uh, obligations. The, um, the prohibitions obviously um, uh, deal with your financial interests, your interest in contracts, and it also deals with this thing that, that is not an actual conflict, but an appearance of conflict. And that is when someone who is not your immediate family member can in unduly enjoy your favor or unduly uh, suffer your wrath because of uh, who they are. So, if your college roommate comes to the council to get something done, you need to disclose the fact that this is your college roommate, or your, your, your sister's brother-in-law, or some other non-immediate family relationship that when one looking at the situation and knowing all the facts, might come to the reasonable conclusion that that person is either gaining your favor or suffering your wrath, not because of the facts, but because of who they are. So, uh, in that situation, when there's no financial interest, um, sunshine is the disinfectant. You disclose it in a public way, and then you're able to go forward. So, I'm just going to close this part of it, of my brief presentation, to say that I am always available to talk about conflicts of interest. You have an absolute right to contact city solicitor to. Uh, if you have a concern about a possible conflict of interest. Let me also say that if you have already done what you think that you might not, that you shouldn't have done, it's too late. Okay? Uh, don't call the State Ethics Commission because you're not going to get advice, you're going to go to the Enforcement Division. And I'm not saying don't call them because I, you know, I don't want them to enforce the conflict of interest law, but you're not going to get advice. If you're looking for advice, get your advice before you act. So when that thought comes into your head, contact me, contact the State Ethics Commission before you act. That's the most important uh, point I can uh, impart to you today about conflicts of interest. I also say that the single most common question I get, not only from the council, but from employees of this city, um, that speaks volumes to the kind of city we have because it's about raising money. It's about asking people for money. And usually it's about asking people for money on behalf of nonprofits. Sometimes it's about private business, but almost always it's about uh, those who are serving nonprofits and trying to raise money for nonprofits. Uh, and the conflict law uh, does apply to this because anyone who has business before this council cannot be specifically solicited for money. You can always go on the radio, you can always go on TV, you can put ads in the paper, but once you start targeting constituents who have business before this body for do donations for any entity, that has the potential to be a conflict of interest. So I want you to be careful about that. The, the clarity on business before this body, by virtue of being constituents, they can always potentially have business before this right, body. Right, but I'm talking about those who have foreseeably have business before this body. But it is, what I'm asking is, is direct number of, as you point out, serve on nonprofit boards or have, mm -hmm. have affiliation with them. 
so calling up donors who live in the city would and asking them to donate could establish even despite the fact that they have never come before the council let's just say someone who sits on the license commission decides to solicit restaurant owners for donations well that i, I yes uh, you there are there's a class of people who come before you uh, for permits for for whatever they're coming before you for if there's a force if you can foresee that that person is going to come before you or that category or group of people are going to be coming before this body then you should be very cautious about asking them for money if someone wants a speed hump on their street and then you call them up and say I'm looking for donations for <laughs> yeah, such probably such not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. all right thanks open meeting let me just talk briefly about opening if there's no other conflicts, questions. Yeah. Just one back on nonprofit fundraising. Um, so is, is it the case that if I, as a board member of a nonprofit, were to put my name on a generic fundraising appeal, letter, not directed to any individuals, but it would be going out to folks in Northampton and East Hampton and up and down the valley, that's okay. But if it's directed to specific individuals, who might have business for the council it's or classes of individuals class. sometimes we say let's break out the city let's let's you know let, let's contact all the lawyers let's contact all the real estate brokers and if those that class has business before this council you should not direct your solicitation to that class you can always do just a general solicitation in every mailbox uh, in the newspaper on TV on the radio general solicitation isn't is not a problem but I would suggest that we get the, the actual facts before I, you know, suggest what, what the proper uh, uh, conduct is. Okay. Council of Bars and Council Chair. Yes. I want to thank you, um, Attorney Sewell, because I don't know how many times I have called you in regards to exactly what you're talking about and also about the conflict of interest law. And it was extremely helpful, especially when you have family who are lawyers and who also represent in the city. And it was very, very helpful where I reaccused myself on many ordinances that came here at city council. And also, too, like with fundraising, when we did the hair and fashion show for the Mass General Cancer Unit at the Cooley Dick, you were very helpful with that because we had our own chair that we designated who went out and got the money. So protected ourselves. It's only doing the ask that's the problem. Um, so not not to disagree with you, but I I called the Ethics Commission once about freelance work that I was doing and was told that I couldn't solicit anyone in Northampton just Period, as long as they were in Northampton. Uh, if for fundraising outside of Northampton, yes. Oh, but, but it was nothing I've said has anything to do with you. Go to East Hampton, call anybody you want. Right, but even if it, they told me anybody who was a resident of Northampton. I need to know the facts of this because I, uh, I've been in contact with them many times. I see more than one person around this room who I've had this discussion with. Um, so I'd be happy to talk with you okay. about that, but that's not, that's never been my understanding. Okay. Um, it's only when your, your position as a counselor has the potential to be coercive, that mm -hmm. has the potential to make people feel like they better give, not because they want to give, but they should give because you're a counselor. Right, and I think the argument they gave me is just by my standing as a public official, that could be interpreted as coercive for someone who is a resident of Northampton. But if they don't have any business before the council, what's the coercive effect? I just don't understand that. Okay. So I would. Oh, yeah. That. Open meeting. Uh, we all in this room have a, uh, a, a, a dedication to the transparency in government, and that's what the open meeting law is all about. Uh, you all have been on this council. You know that your meetings are open to the public. You know, your hearings are open to the public. There are very specific enumerated exceptions for which uh, this body can meet in executive session. Uh, usually uh, that's done, I, I usually know about it in advance, because I usually look at your, your agenda before the meeting happens uh, to make sure that it's a proper uh, uh, purpose for executive session. Uh, the way 
we get tripped up here is serial emails, serial conversations out of the open, out of an open meeting. Just be really careful about serial emails. The things that can be uh, done outside of a meeting by email are scheduling, uh, uh, circulating agendas, and circulating documents that will be discussed at the open session. So if you have a report or a study that you think would be helpful to count for the counselors to have prior to the meeting at which the topic will be discussed, that's fine. I encourage all of you to remind each other, do not reply all. Do not reply all, because once you reply all, you have violated the open meeting law. Once you express your view on on a document or uh, an issue that's being circulated properly by email, that's a violation. So no reply all to emails among counselors. Uh, Ms. Kretzler will be sending things to you and I hope that she will remind you not to reply all when contacting her about what's, what was sent. That's the main uh, area of uh, problem area. But what, one of the safeguards for that is if you BCC all the people you're sending to, they can reply on them. Right. So if, if it's a, and, and I think Laura's already started to institute that, if it's BCC, it looks like it's just coming to you. There are disclosed recipients, but you can't share with them. So. Great idea. A uh, uh, question that's come up about with regard to the serial communication interpretation. When council business, let's just say between first and second reading of a matter, um, would communication among counselors, once it's been introduced uh, and uh, pending a second reading, would any communication on counselors be considered serial communication at that point? If it reaches five counselors. But only if it reaches five Yeah, counselors. because we're only talking about a quorum. So two of you can meet, three of you can meet, you can devise your strategies, you can discuss whatever you want, but once you get to that fifth counselor, and so if you have a three, and one sends to one, another sends to another, you have just, you now have five, and that's a violation. So be very careful. It's also quorum of subcommittees that becomes problematic. Quorum of subcommittees become, that's, that's exactly true. The subcommittees are just as subject to open meeting law as the, the entire body. Information that uh, comes to us from people who aren't members of the council about other counselors, I understand that that also can put us in jeopardy. Unless the there is a communication, a deliberation of communication among five counselors, there's no problem. So if a constituent comes to you and says something about another counselor? That another counselor plans to vote a particular way on something, and then it's told to another counselor the same information. I mean, how? A, a private party cannot violate the open meeting law. And so a private party can contact each, of, each one of you separately and tell, tell each of you whatever he or she wants to tell you. They're including what other counselors have said to them? Yes, because you're not communicating with those other counselors. And there's nothing you can do to prevent a, a uh, constituent from calling all of you and talking about what others said. What you can't do is talk to each other. Any other questions on open meeting law? Or do you want to move on to the third topic? Public records law. Okay. Did you have a council plan? Did you have a oh, no. oh. Oh. Public records law. Uh, as you know, the public records law was overhauled completely or in significantly at the beginning of this, beginning of last year. Um, and uh, so we're now a year into it. Um, let me give you three letters R A O. Okay. Operate through your records access officer who is Ms. Kretzler, are you, are you the RAO for the, for the council? Um, I haven't been so informed, but 
<laughs> be happy to serve if asked. <laughs> I believe you will be serving as RAO for the, the council. The city clerk here is the city's RAO, mm -hmm. and so you can always operate through her as well. But this should not be a, a lone mission. This should be coordinated through your records access officer, a newly created position in the new law. Okay. Let me also say and, and, and that any document made or received by you as a counselor is presumed to be a public record. That means and that if you're using your private email for council business, which there's no prohibition against, you may have people scouring your private email for public records if, if push comes to shove. I warn you that it's not, it's not illegal, but to the extent that you can use your public email for public business, it makes things a lot cleaner. Okay? Because just because they're on your private email doesn't mean they're not public records. And if there's ever a lawsuit, you can expect the lawyers to want to take a look at your private emails to see whether there are any public records in those private emails. So just a word of caution. Uh, if you don't want to use the public email, maybe you want another email address that you just use for city business and have you know, your private email in private. That's my recommendation to you. You can take or leave. Um, and um, you know, there are very specific ways of, dis of getting authorization to destroy public records. I would uh, encourage you not to do it without first getting your uh, authorization from the Secretary of the Commonwealth. So you have not only, you have a, an obligation to retain those records that, that are made or received by you as counselors. Uh, um, is there a statute of limitations on that? You know, I don't actually, I think it's seven years, but I'd have to get back to you on that. From, from the date So I actually have, I mean, so I had, I have kept everything from when I was first elected back when email was, you know, chiseling things on rocks, but mm -hmm. it was, I still have those. I don't, I have no idea how to find them, but the fact is, I, I don't, I never understood if it's seven years during your term, your tenure. From when they're made or received. From when they were generated, okay. Right. Questions? No, we still need to go online and take that class, correct? Yeah. Yes. For this term, every every new term we have to take. You know, I saw I, I was going through the uh, um, I was going through the website and they were talking. About, no, that was yeah, I believe you do have to take a every term. Law. Yeah. Uh, so. And that's farther down our agenda and our administrative system will email the link after yeah, like to this meeting to all the counselors. So, um, yeah, so th this, this thing about the statute of, of limitations, so on email, so like um, if you have a Comcast account, it's like having a very long contract that you can't just get rid of Comcast and move on, you know, that that we're required, if you're doing public business through that, you're required to keep that account. You have to keep that account, or you'll have to uh, archive the record somehow if you're gonna get rid of the account. Okay. So you're gonna have to find all your public records in that account and archive them. Okay. You know, that's the advantage of using the Northampton MA. Uh, they're all archived for you here, and you don't have to think about it again. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're and, welcome. And the key point is, <coughs> this isn't the end of the opportunity to ask you questions. If we come up with some, we can contact you. We should. Mm -hmm. I live down on King Street during the day. Okay, so please come see me, call me. Um, I'd be happy for any of you who want my my uh, cell phone number to, to take my cell phone number, which I'm not going to talk about in public right now, but <laughs> I'll talk to you privately about. And um, you know, contact me if you need me, particularly conflict of interest. That is, you know, of all of the things that you have to worry about, that should be near the top of your list. Making sure that you're sure about whether you can do what you're thinking about doing. 
Mr. Seawall, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, item 8 is uh, in order to set the, uh, the date and time of the 2018 2019 council meetings. Um, is there an order to approve, excuse me, is there a motion to approve the order? So Okay, made by Council Dwight, second by Council Barge. Does that really have the schedule? Order and schedule? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In the back of the right now. Okay. Okay. I did just change it. Okay. Well, so there you have it. Um, are there any problems or desires to change? around any of those dates, typically the summer, July and August, which we usually have one meeting in those months. Is, is there some, anything different here than what was distributed before? The one change I made was that I had the third meeting in July for um, 2018 and 2019, and Councilor Murphy brought to my attention that there's a deadline of the 15th to make changes to close out the fiscal year, so I moved it to the second Tuesday. In, oh, I see. There's Thursday. Thursday in July, the 12th. That's the old change I made to I made that today. Okay. I think that's typical too of those months to have it in the off rather than first or third to have it in the right. second. That's what the just what we've done. Okay. Um, after this is approved, we can always make changes in the future if we have to. Um, we try to minimize that so the public will know when we're meeting, but that's possible as well. But for today, is there any discussion or changes to the proposed meeting dates. Um, if not, um, I'll ask for the roll call on this order as well. Councilor LaBarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Is there a desire to suspend rules? Uh, do you have a second reading on the order? No, I move to suspend rule 14. Second. Is there a second? Second. Uh, okay. Any discussion on the suspension of rules to allow for a second reading? Um, all in favor of suspending the rules, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The rules are suspended. Is there a motion to approve the order on second reading? So moved. Second. Made by Councilor Dwight, second by Councilor Sheriff. Any discussion? Uh, question. Please. Um, this was sent us in a packet today. Um, it was included in the packet, it wasn't sent, but it was just um, a, a revised um, schedule was posted to the website today, okay. a replacement of what had been posted on Friday. Okay, so it hasn't been sent, I can't send it. Okay, now we got there. And, and what we're looking at is the first and third Thursdays of every month, essentially, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, any other discussion on second reading? Um, can we have a roll call on that as well? Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. And Councilor Lavard? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And item nine is administrative items. Um, the first you heard already, which is the online ethics plan. Um, our administrative assistant has um, volunteered to send that out to everybody and it has to be completed in a timely way. I'm not sure what the deadline is. I assume it's 30 days or something like that. Um, but we've all done it before, I think. You just go on, it's just kind of an animated quiz, which is impossible to fail. So um, please, please do it. And I think you have to print out a certificate and bring it back to the council office. So if you would please make a point of doing that. And the only other item administratively is committee preferences. And I think as in the past, um, if you would, uh, well, no one, this is no one's first rodeo, everyone knows what the committees are. Um, if you would please submit to me your preferences um, for what committees you wish to serve on. Um, and I would plan on making appointments um, on or before our uh, second regular council meeting of the year. Council Barge. I wanted to talk about that on our committee preferences. Please. Say like us counselors, which a lot of us have been on a lot of the committees, and we're happy with what we're doing and the committees that we're involved in. Is that also something that we could bring up and talk about? Of how we feel about the committees? Are we happy with what we're on and so forth? And right now, you mean? Um, 
I suppose, I suppose you could express your preferences today if, if you wished. Um, I kind of think a better way to do it the way that Council Dwight has done in the past is just get me your preferences because there's a lot of things to balance. There might be competing uh, preferences and conflicts and then the task would be to iron it out and submit it. Um, after it's submitted, if it's, there are egregious problems, you can, you know, it's not unheard of that there be adjustments, but I would kind of would prefer for counselors just to let me know what their preferences are. But if you feel you, you know, you want to speak to any of it today, you certainly, I mean, it's on the agenda. Council Barbie, speak. Well, no, if we, we could email you to say we like where we are. Certainly. Right. Yeah, we could do that as well. Absolutely. So we don't have to do it here today. We could just mm -hmm. say, hey, I like what I'm doing, and if possible, leave, leave me where I am. And so, oh, please, Council Chair. Do you have a preference of like a top three ranking, or how and what? I, I would prefer that you rank them all. Every committee that exists. Okay. Every committee that exists, um, because that makes it easier to sort through if there's any you know, conflicts. And so those, we have five council committees, the Committee on Legislative Matters, Committee on Finance, Community Resources, City Services, and Public Works and Utilities, and then the administrative code um, that the mayor has set up establishes the Energy and Sustainability Commission, the Transportation and Parking Commission, and the Disability Commission as the, the three multi -member, uh, multiple member bodies uh, that the mayor accepts recommendations from the council president for appointments. There are some, for whatever reason, like rights commission uh, the youth commission maybe some other ones for which there are no recommendations but it's basically the five council committees and basically three mayoral commissions so if you rank eight I suppose disabilities disabilities as well which actually is a unique status so. disability as well yeah. a little grid might be helpful okay folks to then put in numerically is what you're looking for right here. sure Okay, so perhaps we'll we'll email that out as well with the ethics link, if that makes it easier to. Write. So when do you want this? Absolutely, I'd like it um, as as soon as possible. Yeah. Please. I'm hoping that there's no. Uh, everyone knows which committees they don't like. I know that. <laughs> but if you send us a grid and we reply to that in a timely manner, that'll take care of it. Absolutely. Good. Um, nothing else on that. I have no further updates. Are there any other one minute announcements from counselors today? Um, I move to adjourn. Okay, no new business. Any, um, anyone opposed to adjourn? All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much.